right. Good morning, folks. I have to tell you, it is an absolute blessing to be here with you guys. We have a lot to go over. We are talking about conspiracies. I don't want to use the word conspiracy theory because there is no real such thing as one. Um, <clears throat> let me just simply say this. Let me say that the whole idea of conspiracy centering around the destruction of your soul, the quality of your life, and everything else centers around the character of the devil. And I want to make myself very clear. So we're going to talk about that. And I am going to show you a video. It's roughly a seven-minute video that we're going to tear apart and analyze a little bit that is going to actively and vividly demonstrate the fact that there are forces outside of even us as human beings that are seeking to destroy not only the way of life that we have come to know in this country, but to destroy the very soul of man. We see evidence of it everywhere. We're going to talk about that today. We've got a lot of material that we're going to cover. Uh, if we have a chance, we will get into some of the headlines as they have uh, surfaced and manifested in a very ugly way. And by the way, I will tell you that if you want to start really talking about conspiracies at a whole completely different level, then you have to. You absolutely have to talk about one of the things that's happening right now that we witnessed a few days ago with a container. I, I, you know what? I'll get there when it's time. But that ship that went into that bridge... I'm telling you this right now, very, very unlikely that what we witnessed was an accident, okay? And I'm not trying to be funny. I'm not trying to be weird about this. But what I am saying is that what we are witnessing is something that is absolutely insane, okay? And I'm telling you, it's getting more and more insane by the moment. We are watching it. We are seeing it. We have evidence around us that literally there are forces hard at work seeking to destroy everything around us. And we're going to get into all of that. So before we do, uh, just a very, very quick thing. I want to run over some of you. You guys are amazing. You, I, look, I, I have to just say this. The support that you have shown us during this time period, whether it be on Locals, whether it be here on YouTube or on Rumble, the love that you have shown us in caring for me and my family, extending yourself out in prayer, uh, and all the other things that you guys continue to do for us, you guys are really amazing people. And I just want to say that I thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. I thank the Lord for you guys. You guys are amazing people who continue to go out of your way to just love on and minister to me and my family, and I just thank you so much for that. I can't say thank you enough. With that, let's just jump in really quickly and uh, read some of the super chats that have come in. I think we just have one. Brad is always first to the table now. He has become the new, uh, the new guy to come first to the table. Let's see what Brad has to say because it's always funny uh, reading what he has to say. It says the Fairfax County. <laughs> I know what this is going to be. The Fairfax County Board of Supervisors announced Sunday, uh, Easter Sunday, will be Transgender Day of Visibility. Really? To quote one of my favorite pastors, that's you, Brother James. Jesus could come at any time. And I, look, I have to say this. Let me do this really quickly. I have to clear my sinuses after reading that comment. But I'm going to explain that in just one second. And it's going go, to go right back to everything that we've talked about. I'm going to mute this really quickly. Hold on. I <clears throat> I just muted the microphone so I wouldn't cough in the microphone, but I just did it again. Um, <clears throat> I, I am I'm blown away at the ideals, the thoughts, and the philosophies of this world and how on God's green earth we do not see the conspiracy behind this. It's, it's, it's just absolutely crazy. And um, I, look... <laughs> I, I, 
I have so much to say about this. By the way, Mercy Chanter, thank you so much. Uh, God bless you. And yeah, God bless you. This is an amazing. I love the. I love the. I love the messaging in Greek. That's great. Um, we we have to start with something very basic before we get into all of this evidence. But even the story that Brad just mentioned. I mean, do you not see the conspiracy, folks? Do, do you not see the opportunity that the devil is trying to take advantage of to just completely destroy life as we know it? The more you expose things to unrighteousness and wickedness, the more likely. I, look, let's just get into it. I think that's the wiser thing to do because to build my statement on the premise that we have to build it on, we have to go to the very beginning. So let's do that. Let's go to the book of Genesis. We're gonna go there. I'm gonna, I, I briefly have to bring this up because this is like really, really, really important. We have to go right to the beginning. We have to get into the discussion that we have had on multiple occasions regarding the fall of mankind and how man chose to yield itself to the enemy and what the enemy did in order to do and accomplish what he has accomplished so far and continues to accomplish. So let's get into this for just a second. Because once we start here, then we can build on the foundation that we're laying. Because I want everybody to understand this. When we look at the term conspiracy theorist, that was a term that was invented by clandestine operators that work for our country. Okay, That was done a long time ago. And the CIA did a very, 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 very good job of making anybody who speculated on any level of conspiratorial action in any way look like they were complete kooks. This was something that they did. They did it on purpose. And I think that this is something that we also have to understand because if we don't understand this, then we're going to have a very very, very, very difficult time putting everything together. This is how Satan operates. I want to make myself clear before I read this passage. Satan will deceive you primarily in two remarkable ways. The first way that he will deceive you is by getting you to believe that what is happening right now in the current moment has nothing to do with anything that can harm you or destroy you. And thus, you will not engage in seeking to correct the problem that you observe or supposedly ignore or choose not to observe. In other words, one of the most effective tactics of the enemy is to beat you at war by making you think there is no war. So if you don't think you're in a war, then you're not going to engage. And if you don't engage, well, then, quite frankly, it doesn't matter. It's one of the ways that Satan does what he does, and he's very, very, very good at it, right? I mean, imagine if you walk into a war field where people are shooting at you and you don't believe you're at war. You don't believe people are going to shoot at you. You don't believe people are trying to take your life. You don't believe that your way of life is at risk. You don't believe your family's at risk, and you just walk them through. Doing that is such a unique picture of how Satan works. Let me give you another example of this. We have some really amazing people that live right next to us. Really, really great people. Actually, our whole neighborhood is filled with really amazing people. We've got evangelists that live in our neighborhood. We have people, I mean, they're not evangelists like professionally, but they they just, they preach the gospel to everybody. We have people in our neighborhood that are Christians today because of one of my neighbors, Ernie, who's actually preached the gospel to more people than you can shake a stick at. It's kind of a funny, very, very funny thing to see how God has just transformed everybody's lives. There's one family in particular on, on our neighborhood, and we have a lot of great families in our neighborhood, but one family in particular who uh, the wife is an attorney. And by the way, she's a very accomplished one. She's a really sharp one. And she's one of these physically fit kind of go-getters. She's very busy lady. She works very hard throughout the day. Um, her husband and her son are, are, are all the same way. Her children, her whole family, she's, she's very much the same way. They're all the same way. And a few nights ago, my wife witnesses or observes spots a coyote. Now, we have those. They're pretty common in our neighborhood. Matter of fact, in Single Hill, we see a lot of coyotes all over the place. 
Apparently, right now, on the southern border, we see lots of coyotes, but that's a whole other story. <laughs> it's a different type of coyote. <laughs> I would get myself in trouble with that. Anyway, so we, uh, we see this coyote the other day. And as we do, my wife goes in because she's got the dog with her. But I notice it's a relatively warm night. When I say warm, I mean, it's not like super warm, but it's not super cold. So there's a lot of people walking around. So when they walk, you know, when a coyote is alone, it's not all that big of a deal. But when they walk with other coyotes in the neighborhood, then you have to really kind of be concerned. So I get in my car and I'm like, I'm going to go see if I can kind of blow my high beams at them and shoo them away because that's kind of how it works. And they end up going into the like over where the riverbed is and kind of do their own thing. So I get in my vehicle, and as I get into my vehicle, I notice there are tons of people walking around, and they're walking around with their little tiny dogs. So as I'm going through the neighborhood, I'm warning everybody, hey, be careful, there's coyotes around the corner, be careful, there's coyotes. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. A couple people, oh, don't worry about that, I got my gun on me, you know, <laughs> it's kind of funny. But I go around and I warn everybody. And then I see this girl who's an attorney, who's one of our neighbors, and I, and I kid you not, I tell her, hey, be careful. There's coyotes out there. She says, oh, I saw them. And I chased them away. I actually ran after them, told them to get out of here. I'm like, <laughs> so I, I will give it to this woman. She's a brave, courageous lady that's really tough. I, I, I will tell you that. But I think sometimes what the devil will do is he will get us to behave exactly the same way that that attorney did. And let me explain that. By the way, that attorney is not a devil. She's a really wonderful lady. She's sweet, smart, brilliant, you know, just a really wonderful lady. But I'm bringing this up because I think there has to be a part inside of you that says, I'm not concerned about something damaging me if you're willing to go right in its face and just say like, no big deal, right? What the devil does is worse because what the devil will do is bring you to a place unlike the coyote situation. He will bring you to a place where you don't even have a chance to calculate what's in front of you. In other words, that lady who was jogging that night knew the coyotes were there. She's had experience with them. She's chased them away. She's ran off, ran them off before. Nothing about what she's done is something that she has not seen or been a part of before. And certainly nothing about what she was doing exhibits whether or not she's aware of what's going on around her. She very clearly understands what's happening. But she's making a calculated risk, understanding that engaging with the coyote could be very dangerous. Okay? Now I'm going to modify that illustration for just a second. Let's pretend that same woman is jogging in the neighborhood. And there are 15 coyotes that are following her. They're drooling. They're ready to go. And she's walking as though there's nothing there. It's only a matter of time before those coyotes destroy her. But she doesn't care because not only does she not see them, but she doesn't want to see them because of the state of her mind. Somebody, somehow, somewhere told her that if you pretend nothing is going on, then everything is going to be okay. That's exactly what Satan does. That's the first tactic that the, that the enemy deploys. And he's very good at it. It's one of the most significant ways that he seeks to attack us. The second way, this one is also like unbelievable. And by the way, he does it a bunch of other ways, but these are the two, I would just say most prominent ways. Is he looks for ways to teach people to embrace wickedness and while doing so, cast aspersion on the truth. Think about that for a second, okay? If he can get you to embrace wickedness, while at the same time casting aspersion on the word of God, then what he can do in essence is he can get you to do anything that you feel like you want to do 
knowing full well that whatever happens will destroy you. Right? You wake up in the morning. You're not walking with God. You hate God. There's, there's nothing about you that wants to do anything with God because you've somehow convinced yourself that you don't like him for whatever reason. And then you want to feel good. So you go do whatever is going to make you feel good. You go, you find a sexual partner. You go and uh, consume drugs, whatever it might be. But the reality of it is many people that live that way have already fallen victim to the second tactic of the enemy. One of the things that we don't realize, and I think this is even more significant and perhaps the most significant aspect of all of this, is that when these tactics are deployed, they require conspiratorial action. Let me say that again. When both of these tactics are deployed, at their perhaps most significant level, they require conspiratorial action. It is not something that actually requires very little thought. It is something that requires intricate and very, very well thought out action. The devil just doesn't wake up in the morning and say, oh yeah, this is just a great idea, right? Uh, you know what, this is... You know, let's just try to let's just try to throw him off. No. He has thousands of years of experience doing this, and he spends time thoroughly planning his action. And once the action is thoroughly planned, he effectively executes. And one of the principles that the enemy understands and understands it well is actually a biblical principle and one that we have to learn how to lean on. And that is the fact that when you come together with other like-minded people, your effectiveness in the very goal that you have to accomplish something increases substantially. When you choose to be one man on one island, you are never effective. But when you choose to allow yourself to find people who are like-minded, who are receiving the same marching orders from the same commander-in-chief, you find yourself in a position where you become a whole lot more effective. By the way, some of the most wealthiest people in the world understand this principle. They understand that they have to corroborate with people. They have to employ some level of collaboration because if they don't, they're never going to be able to leverage whatever asset they have to be able to bring the greatest return. If we can apply a principle like this to something as easy and simple and basic as money, Imagine the kind of tactic that the enemy is deploying to seek to destroy your soul. Here's the thing about collaborating. And here's the thing about conspiracy theories. Or let's throw the word theory out. Here's the thing about conspiracies as they relate to the devil. When he deploys them, he plays for keeps. He is so good at deploying his tactics that his conspiratorial effort oftentimes utilizes people that he's victimizing. So, so think about it like this, because this is where it gets real interesting, right? You have to, you have to really picture this, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to prove this to you in the book of Genesis. When we think of a conspiracy, the very first thought that goes through our head, it's, it's a real simple thought, right? The very first thought that goes through our head is, oh, yeah, look, he's... Man, that's kind of crazy. These guys are like duking it out uh, or, or figuring out a way to duke it out with this other guy. And you've got all these evil people that are sitting in like the star chamber and they're sitting down and they're, they're figuring out a way to make it miserable for their enemy. Well, the devil might do that every now and again. But where he becomes the most effective is he identifies a victim. And then once he identifies the victim, which by the way, all of mankind is, is his victim. That's why he's called the enemy. That's why he's called Satan. He is the adversary, okay? But this is what he does. Pay attention to this, folks, because it's really important. He identifies, listen to me closely. He identifies the victim that he seeks to exploit. And then what he does is he utilizes, very commonly, one or two of the tactics that we just talked about. 
Then what he does, which is really important that we catch this, is he utilizes the victim that he is targeting to become a co-conspirator without them knowing they're co-conspirators to allow his effectiveness to be leveraged in a way that damages the largest group of people that he can damage. This is why he targets people like pastors first. This is why he goes out of his way to target people that are in the highest, most influential circles because in his mind, if I can figure out a way to cause somebody to be given to sin and I can get myself to that place where they completely allow themselves to capitulate to the desire of their flesh, then I can turn them into a co-conspirator. And even though they don't see it, even though they don't understand it or know it, they will start working with me in order to destroy human life. Just so that you know, and this will be a major spoiler alert before I read the story. But just so that you know, the devil did this with Adam and Eve. You understand that, right? The devil actually deceived Eve. And once Eve was deceived, Eve became a co-conspirator with the devil. You might say, well, it's very difficult to be a co-conspirator when you, as the co-conspirator, lack intent. Problem is, one co-conspirator's intent might be different than the grand conspirator. The grand conspirator's intent may center around this nefarious ideal that he wants to destroy the very soul of every single person that he touches. The intent of the co-conspirator might be developed in a way that seeks what they think is going to be a better option for their lives, not understanding that they are setting them and themselves down a path of destruction, them and their family down a path of destruction. So both conspirators don't have to have the same nefarious intent, but they can still be conspiring together. You guys understand what I'm saying? It's important that we understand these terms. If we don't understand this, we're never going to understand the tactic of our enemy. We're never going to understand how he does what he does and why he chooses to do what he does. So let me demonstrate this concept or this principle to you from the Bible because it's really, 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 really important that you guys see this. Okay? Look what it says. And the Bible tells us this, guys. Look, right off the bat, this is like super important. By the way, John and Roger, thank you for this. I love this Bible that you guys got me. It's just awesome. Look what it says. I'm going to start right from the beginning of chapter three. It says this. It says, now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. Okay. Can we just stop for just one second and point out one very important thing? Can we point out the fact that this serpent, which we already know is Satan, was more cunning than anything else or anybody else. Okay, you, do you understand the word cunning here? Is a super critical word for us to be able to grasp. Because when we look at the word cunning, what cunning does is it brings us to a place of realization where we begin to understand that there is deep-rooted, nefarious intent built into the action of the person that's being described here. When we talk about cunningness, as the King James is using it here, as the Bible chooses to use it, the picture is that there is a very honed-in skill set that is designed to take advantage of any vulnerabilities that are previously identified by that person and exploit those vulnerabilities and then convert, once those vulnerabilities have been exploited, convert the victim into that place of functioning as a co-conspirator. So the Bible right off the bat warns us. I mean, immediately the Bible warns us and says, hey, this, this, this devil here, he's more cunning than anybody else. 
Think about that. That's a very, very heavy warning. It's not something that we should just look at and go, oh, well, you know, that's kind of cool. That's good. That's good information. I can live without that info or, or live with that info or live without it. It's not what happened here, right? So he's very cunning. And look what it says. He said to the woman, this is to Eve. He's talking to Eve. He approaches her. By the way, why does he approach her? I'll tell you why. The grand conspirator, Satan, approaches Eve because he already recognizes a vulnerability in her condition. There are two major vulnerabilities, by the way, in Eve that we have to talk about. And they're critical that you understand these vulnerabilities because it is very easy for you to shield yourself from these vulnerabilities if you look at them biblically. The first, the first vulnerability that he identified, and this is absolutely critical, is the fact that he went to a person that did not hear the word of God directly. He went to a person that heard the word of God secondarily. God spoke to Adam, and Eve heard from Adam what God had said. Now, the way you shield yourself from that vulnerability is you get yourself into this, into this book as much as you possibly can and allow yourself to be put in that place where you are not going to be vulnerable. If you have direct knowledge of the word of God, the likeliness of the capitulation to the type of vulnerability that comes from not knowing the word of God is diminished. If you go to me and you say, God said, and I know what God said because I read what God said, I heard what God said, you're never going to be able to tell me anything differently. It's just that simple. As a matter of fact, as a father and as a husband, it's my responsibility to make sure that my children will never experience that vulnerability. So what do I do? I go, to my, I go out of my way every single day. I read the Bible to my children. We read the word to our children. It's critical. Why? Because I do not want Eve, I do not want my children to be in the same place that Eve was. So it's the first vulnerability that Satan exploits. The second vulnerability that he exploits, and this one is even more significant, and it is one that we have to understand, is the emotional vulnerability. He understood the fact that Eve had a greater tendency to yield to the emotional state, especially when that emotion is being produced by a desire to want to make her and her family better. So what do we do? We guard ourselves from the place of allowing our influences, our emotions to influence us by spending time regularly communicating with the Lord. If we're regularly communicating with the Lord, then the vulnerability that comes from having that emotional tendency begins to go away because you're allowing your emotions to be on display before God. And then God does something to regulate those emotions and it continues to change things. Eve was vulnerable on both of those levels. Now, this is not going to be me teaching through Genesis chapter 3. So I'm going to very quickly read through this because I just, I just want you to understand the picture overall because I'm going to show you some videos that are going to demonstrate how effective the devil works. And I'm going to identify these vulnerabilities in this video that I show you, which will effectively and very powerfully demonstrate the principle that I'm sharing. Okay? Okay. So watch this. This is, this is interesting. So he goes to the woman and he said to the woman, has God indeed said you shall not eat of the tree of the, of the garden? Okay, this, this is really interesting because what the devil does here, and it's really important, is he casts, immediately casts dispersion on the word of God by going to the woman and saying, did God actually say that? Again, if you have the vulnerability of not knowing the word of God, you're not going to be able to deal with the problem that comes from not knowing God's word, right? This is, this is such a significant issue. So she is now going to respond by repeating what she believes her husband told her. And by doing so, she's not going to accurately quote the word of God, and then the devil will take advantage of another vulnerability that we haven't talked about. And then we'll, we'll move on, okay? Look what happens. And the woman said to the serpent, 
We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God said, you shall what? Not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Uh-oh. You guys understand how this works? You start wrong, and then it begins to tailspin from there. She didn't hear directly from God. She heard from Adam. By not hearing directly from God, by not hearing from Adam, and by having a very emotional tie to the condition that she finds herself in. Remember, this is Satan converting a woman into a co-conspirator. Okay, I just want you to see this. Okay? She says something that God never said. She said, well, let, me, let me read this to you one more time. She said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. God didn't say you shouldn't touch it. God said you shouldn't eat it. So she added another restriction. Now you guys know what happens next. And this is where it gets really interesting, right? Then the serpent said to the woman, you will surely not, or you will not surely die. For God knows in the day that you eat it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. You know what the best thing about grand conspirators are? Well, he is the grand conspirator. But the best thing, the, one of the most, ad, let me just say this, effective characteristics that exist with Satan is when he lies to you, he will not lie so blatantly and openly that the lie is obviously in your face. He will lie in a way that he gives you just enough truth that's twisted where it actually sounds believable and then you buy it hook, line, and sinker and you destroy your life. This is how Satan works. And folks, I cannot, I absolutely cannot emphasize this to you enough. The devil is good at what he does here. Okay? And, and, and notice what he does. He gives a partial truth. Well, you're not going to die yet. Well, you physically may not die when you eat it but your soul is going to die, right? Well, your eyes will be opened. Well, yeah, your eyes will be opened, but they will be open to the wrong thing. And the shame and the pain and the suffering and the embarrassment and the depression and all the other things that you never felt because your eyes were never open to it, you're now going to start feeling it all. You see, the devil only told part of the story. He didn't tell the whole story. That's very important that we understand this. Super critical that we recognize this. So, it, it, it's, it's really critical what happens next. So, when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of the fruit of it and ate. And then it says she also gave it to her, gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Did you notice that? He received it from his wife who gave it to him. She immediately took of that fruit, disobeyed the word of God, or was deceived, and then immediately she takes it and hands it to her husband. Hey, eat this. She became the co-conspirator. Here's something that's really funny. It's not funny, it's just terribly sad. All of it was based on a lie. All of it was based on a lack of understanding of the cause and effect of an action that could so easily destroy a person's life. And what's even more sad about this is when you go back and you look at the moment when God created mankind, God told them, this is really interesting. As a matter of fact, let's let's I'm going to just turn over there in Genesis chapter 1 because I want you to see what God said. God says this in Genesis chapter 1 verse 27. Okay? Actually, let's go to 28 because he creates man in his own image and then God blessed them. This is verse 28. And God said to them, notice this, we've got several commands here, five to be specific. Right? He says, number one, be fruitful. Number two, multiply. Number three, fill the earth. Number four, subdue it. And number five, have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and every living thing that moves on the earth. Be the ultimate consumer. 
You have everything. Here's the thing that's so crazy about the story that I just read you. It's crazy. Please think about this for a second. God told Adam and Eve, you can have it all. Everything. There's nothing on the earth that does not belong to you except this one thing. Don't touch the tree. Here's my thing. Just think about this for a second. If God came to me and he said, here is a trillion dollars, or forget that. Let's just say he gives me every last dime known to mankind on this earth. He says, it's all yours. You can do whatever you want with it. But by the way, there's a penny right there on the floor. Whatever you do, you leave that penny where it is. Don't touch it. You know what I would do? I would take epoxy. Like literally. I would take a wooden structure, build it around that penny, and I would pour epoxy on that penny. And then I would nail it to the ground and build the world's largest fortress around it. And I would literally make it impossible to even look at. Why? I got all the money in the world. Why do I want that penny? Why in the world would I want that penny? I got every dime to my name. See what the devil did? If you don't have the word of God, then you are not reminded of the fact that all was yours, Eve. If you don't understand what God said, then you don't, you, you can't be reminded of the fact that God said you can have everything. If your emotions weren't overwhelming you because you were guided, your emotions were being guided and given to the word of God, then you would have realized I have everything and there is nothing, absolutely nothing that this fruit can do for me that I don't already have everywhere at all times. But what happened? The grand conspirator did what he did and he did it well. And here's the thing that's really funny, folks. It's not funny. It's, it's tragic. It's actually really sad. The Bible doesn't even give us an indication, not even close. There's nothing that we see in the Bible that indicates the fact that Adam resisted. As a matter of fact, Adam not only did not resist, he immediately took it. And then, knowing that he fully disobeyed God, was willing to throw his wife under the bus because he didn't want to take responsibility. Get that? And then guess what happened? He converted Eve to a co-conspirator. The conspiracy was effective in that it destroyed Adam and it destroyed all of humanity. Because the Bible tells us later on that through one man, sin entered the world. Through one man, sin entered the world. I think there's a really important picture here, a critical picture. We don't get this. This is how Satan works. Satan is very, 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 very good at what he does, folks. He is very good, and he will seek to eliminate people in a way that maximizes the casualties. That's what he'll do. Now, people say all the time, forgive the yawn, people say all the time, well, James, you're just a conspiracy theorist, and these are conspiracy. Folks, there is so much going on around us that is very clearly very clearly there is evidence of the fact that the devil is doing what the devil is doing and that this is there are conspiracies everywhere i have not finished doing the research on this ship that hit the bridge but the research that i am doing it's ugly folks do you know that even the the the, the junkiest cargo container ships out there the ones that are the oldest the ones that are just junk have all kinds of redundancies to keep a power loss from causing something to be steered incorrectly. Folks, it, I'm learning right now the engineering theories that drive the structure of the actual bridge. And I'm recognizing how unlikely it is that an accident could produce a, 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 a 
a failure of that magnitude. There's so much about this that we just don't know yet that we're going to know. But my point is, we have evidence of this everywhere. Why? Because this is the devil's world right now. We right now in the current moment, folks, listen to me, we are living in the devil's world. So the devil has everything at his fingertips to do what he wants to do in order to affect and accomplish his purposes. So what I'm about to show you right now is a roughly seven-minute video of a White House press briefing. I want to just simply say this about Jean-Pierre. She's a liar, and she's a very good liar. The whole reason why she actually became the press secretary is because she's black and she's a lesbian. That's just, we all know that, okay? It's the reason why lots of positions in the White House were actually filled. Is because they meet some DEI. By the way, I hear that they've added a new letter to DEI. DEI B. No joke. There's all kinds of things that you could do with that. I'll just let you know. Especially if you, never mind. I just I call it DIE is what I call it. Right? DEI has to DIE. But anyway, she is definitely one of these diversity inclusion, you know, uh, equity inclusion hires for sure. As a matter of fact, there's trouble in paradise right now between her and Kirby, and that's a whole other story. It's not even worth my time even talking about. But the, here's the funny thing about Jean-Pierre. She's not even a good liar. She's a terrible liar. In order to lie in the sophisticated way that I would expect you to need to be able to lie in order to somehow in some way be successful in propagandizing a whole group of people on behalf of a president who's completely brain dead, you have to have some incredible intelligence. I'm going to tell you this right now. I thought that AOC may be one of the dumbest human beings to ever walk on Capitol Hill until I learned and watched and observed Jean-Pierre. AOC looks like a brilliant scholar compared to this woman because this woman lacks serious intelligence. And I'm not saying that to insult her. I'm saying that to prove one very important point, and that is the fact that because of that characteristic in her representations and how she handles things, it's very easy to identify the conspiratorial action in what she's saying. Because you realize very quickly that just like her boss, she herself is a puppet. So let's watch what happens. She's being questioned on a series of things. The border is the hot one in this, in this video. And it, it's, I'm telling you, you guys, this is interesting. Let's see if after listening for maybe the first minute, you can't identify where there's some kind of conspiratorial action taking place. Okay, here we go. This is interesting. This tells us a lot. I just want you to know that. Okay, let's take a listen. Thanks, Green. First, uh, a whole high school in New York is having remote classes today because the building was needed to house people who came into this country illegally. So what is the president's priority in this case? Is it the migrants or is it the students? That's a pretty heavy question. You're, you're kicking students out. Yes, folks, that happened. You're kicking American citizen students out of a classroom to house illegal aliens. Let me rewind that again. And listen to how she addresses this. This is insane. Here we go. President's priority in this case, is it the migrants or is it the students? So let me just uh, just clear this up a little bit. Um, so yesterday, New York City informed us that as a precaution, uh, they would temporarily relocate migrants staying at Floyd Bennett Field to a nearby high school. As of this morning, all migrants have returned to the facility at Floyd Bennett Field. And so anything specific as to the program and what decided to do and all of the specifics to that, I would certainly refer you to New York City uh, for any additional questions. So do you understand the conspiratorial value in everything that I just pointed out? Okay. John Pierre is being asked about illegal aliens being put in a school of active students while all of those students who are American citizens get kicked out of that school and relocated. 
Jean-Pierre's immediate response was, this was an action of New York City. The federal government has nothing to do with it, which is why I would tell you to go to New York City. Here's the problem with these co-conspirators. Okay, It's really important that we understand this, right? It's like super, super, super critical. Anything that relates to citizenship is under the purview of the federal government. Forgive me for saying this, but the federal government, by default, by statute, by the very constitution, has to have its hand in the issue of immigration, especially in illegal immigration. So the question that the Fox reporter is asking is absolutely fair. It's not an inappropriate question, but notice what she's doing. She's saying, oh, this is New York, refer to New York. And by the way, the reason why I say this is because when they went to the city of New York and they talked to those people over there, you know what New York said? New York said, talk to the feds. Speak to the White House. Speak to ICE. Speak to the Department of Justice. All under the purview of the White House. All under the purview of the executive branch. So you understand the game that's being played here? She's saying, go to New York. New York's saying, go to her. But they're both working together. I promise you, a whole massive group of illegal aliens are not going to be allowed to come into New York State or New York City, for that matter, unless there is a conspiratorial action that exists between, or let's just say this, a cooperative action that exists between the state of New York and the city of New York and the federal government, specifically the White House. They're working on this together. I need everybody to understand this. That's exactly what's happening here. They are working on this together. And yes, I will agree. I will say this, Brad. Peter Ducey is undoubtedly the press secretary's worst nightmare. I can tell you that right now. He's a very smart man, like his father. They're both very smart guys. Okay, so I, I, I will just tell you, I love his line of questioning at times. I think, I think sometimes he just outright trolls her, right? She certainly doesn't have the intellect to be able to effectively address the real problems that exist. So she's saying, go to New York. New York is saying, go to the White House. But they're both working together. Do you guys see that? They're both working together. But you ain't seen nothing yet because this, this, some of these clips are going it, it, to it, it's gonna be entertaining. All right, here we go. But if a working parent had to call out to stay home with their kid today, isn't this Biden immigration policy literally taking money out of people's pockets? So let me just let me just say that's a great question. It is. It is. It's 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 completely taking. Uh, it, uh, let me just rewind it so you hear the question again. But it's it's so true. It's it. it anyway, okay, here we go. Immigration policy literally taking money out of people's pockets. So let me just let me just say I'm gonna actually go back to your first question for a second because I think I do need to. By the way, I'm gonna go back to your first question for a second because I think I need to address it. This is her way of a completely avoiding the bigger question that Peter Ducey just asked. What you don't realize, uh, well, you guys realize it because you guys are smart. You guys are super smart. What you may realize, but a lot of people might not realize, is the fact that when Peter Ducey asked that first question, the first question was not meant to be the power punch. The power punch was the follow-up. And at least Jean-Pierre had the presence of mind to recognize she doesn't have the intellectual capacity or the ability to tell the truth enough to be able to address that question directly. So she says, oh, let me go back to, I got to go back to your first question. Now that, you've had a t now that you've had some time to regroup and think about the lie that you're about to tell. Okay, let's go through that question. Let's go through that exchange one more time because it's important. I want you to listen to the power punch first. Okay, it's super, super critical. Super, super critical. Okay, here we go. And so anything specific as to the program and what decided to do and all of the specifics to that, I would certainly refer you to New York City uh, for any additional questions. But if a working parent had to call out to stay home with their kid today, isn't this Biden immigration policy literally taking money out of people's pockets? So let me just, let me just say, I'm going to actually go back to your... So, so you understand the point? Here, here's the point. You're taking a kid out of their classroom. 
If you're taking a kid out of their classroom, then now you're not just displacing the kid. You're displacing mom and dad because mom and dad are now having to lose a day of work because they have to deal with the kid. So Peter's question is powerful. You're taking money out of mom and dad's pocket in order to give to an illegal alien who's broken the law. Woo, it's a great question. She didn't want to answer that question. Let me go back to your original statement and look at how deep she's going to dig the pile. Look at, look at how deep the hole that she's about to dig is going to be. And that hole is filled with you know what. Listen to this. First question for a second, because I think I do need to address that, which is, um, you know, when it comes to... By the way, I, I'm sorry. I know I keep interrupting and everyone's going to get mad at me or whatever, but that's what I do, okay? This is, that's what this is all. This is what, what we do. You notice how she can't even make eye contact? Do you notice that when she answers questions, she can't even make eye contact with people? Why? Because she's a liar. She's a liar just like her, her daddy, the devil. You guys get that, right? She is a liar, and she's good at lying. Not. <laughs> she's not good at lying. She's terrible at lying. Her daddy's very good at lying. Watch this stay home with their kid today. Isn't this Biden immigration policy literally taking money out of people's pockets? So let me just, let me just say, I'm going to actually go back to your first question for a second, because I think I do need to address that, which is, um, you know, when it comes to education, migrants, the economy, the president deals with multiple issues all at once. That is his job. There are multiple things happening all at once. And as it relates to this particular question that you're asking me about in New York City, that is something that New York City needs to answer to. That is a that is a process that they took, so they have to answer to that. Uh, and a, as it relates to migrants and what's happening at the border, look, the president has taken this issue very seriously, very seriously by making sure that on his first day, which is almost three years, it'll be a couple weeks, it'll be three years ago, that he put forward a comprehensive immigration uh, legislation to deal with what's happening with the immigration process, obviously, and also the border. And this is an issue that's been going on for decades. Okay. Should we just start taking apart all the lies? From day one, he put together a comprehensive plan. You know what his comprehensive plan was? Sign an executive order that basically says all the wall building that Trump initiated, we need to put an end to it. The second part of his comprehensive plan is let as many illegal aliens, aliens, folks, not immigrants, aliens, <coughs> let as many eagle, let, let's allow as many illegal aliens to come into the country as much as possible. And shame on you. Shame on you, press secretary, for insulting people like my mom and dad who are now both with the Lord. Shame on you for insulting people like my family who actually are immigrants, who actually did come to this country legally. Come on, folks. Can you see the compounding of lies? And then she says, who well, the president has lots of things to do all at the same time. No, no. The president's handlers have a lot of things to do all, uh, all at the same time. You have all kinds of different people that are discombobulated, putting together all kinds of policies. The president cannot walk and eat ice cream at the same time, folks. You guys get that? The president cannot walk and eat ice cream. Even I can do that. And I'm in a mobility scooter. He's, he's juggling a lot of things. And then she goes back to, this is all New York's fault. <laughs> Can we all say what a joke? This goes back to the fact that Jean-Pierre is an absolute, an, uh, listen to me, listen to me. She is an absolute co-conspirator. She is part of this grand conspiracy that the devil has laid into orchestration. Folks, I'm telling you, if you don't stay close to the word of God, you become part of the conspiracy. The, the, it, people talk about the matrix all of the time. It's this is far the matrix is the matrix is is nothing. The matrix is a distraction compared to the level of conspiratorial action that's taking place here. The matrix is a tool that the devil will use to get you to think elsewhere. He'll do whatever he can 
to distract you. The real issue that's going on is becoming more and more obvious, is it? More and more obvious, isn't it? Watch what else happens. This this gets really interesting. The system has been broken for decades, and the president is the one who has taken action to deal with this while House Republicans do not. Isn't that, isn't that amazing how the president is the one and the House Republicans don't? The system has been broken. Okay, think about this for just a second, right? The system has been least broken than it's ever been in the history of the United States in the last hundred years while the previous president was in office. And then Joe Biden literally, literally destroyed it. He's the one that ushered all of these illegal aliens into the country and flew them all around the country. And you think that he's done better than anybody else? You've lost your mind. You are a cuckoo. She's not even a good liar. She's a terrible liar. They get and, in the way. And Hunter Biden on Capitol Hill today. How big of a headache is that for you? <laughs> <laughs> you understand why he's asking that question. Hunter Biden on Capitol Hill. How, how much of a headache is that? Because we all know what happened, right? Hunter Biden is as guilty as sin. We know that. It's all come out. This whole thing where they tried to shut down the New York Post, the oldest publication in our country, during the time that a very critical decision had to be made in our nation, and say, no, this is all fake, this is all fake. When an overwhelming percentage, 68% of the people who actually chose to give their confidence to Joe Biden said that if they knew that story was real, they would not have voted for him. That's an indisputable fact. And, and, and here we go with all of this. And look at how she responds. It, she is trying to get people to think. She is trying to get people to think that there is no way in the world that Hunter Biden's actions are even close to being associatively valued with anything at the White House. Boy, is that wrong especially when we know what he did. I, it, I, our former president's pocket, Trump's pocket, is lined with money that was created by very good business decisions. Him and his family. The current president's pocket is lined with money that came as a result of, you know, wonder what it feels like to have Chinese money in your pocket. I don't know. Can you, can you get the virus from having that money in your pocket? I don't know. Probably not. <laughs> Hunter Biden is a private citizen. He is not a member of the White House, as you know, and I just don't have anything else to share. How can you say he's not a member of the White House? He's the son of the president. He can live at the White House if he wants to. He has lived at the White House before. He's he stayed in some of the bedrooms that Lincoln stayed in. Probably on crack. Or no, sorry, he's 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 moved on up. It's cocaine. It's not crack. Although he kind of anyway, it's a whole other story. <laughs> we'll have to check the videos to come. Not we'll have to check the videos to confirm that. Not. Am I irritating everybody yet? Good, I hope. There's a little bit of trolling going on here, right? But there's a conspiracy, guys. You understand the conspiracy going on here? He's not part of the White House. We have no affiliate. He's the son of the president. You do, Honestly, if, if, if the son of President Trump, if the sons of President Trump actually committed a legit crime, do you think for one second this media would say that they have nothing to do with the White House? No way! Come on, let's wake up, everybody. Last time he was on the Hill, he said the president was certainly familiar with what his son was going to say. I did say that, and here's so and what I'm saying today. That President Biden does not you. help him with his business deals, but he does help him skirt congressional subpoenas. The questions. <laughs> <laughs> and she refuses to answer it because she knows 
as bad of a liar she is, there's no way in the world she can figure out a way to get around that question, right? So he doesn't know about any of this stuff, but he does learn how to help him, how to teach his son how to skirt subpoenas. Oh, my goodness. Oh, now we got a new question to cover. This is, it's, it's about to get interesting. Here we go. What is the reaction here to the collapse of the border talks over the weekend? You know, that it, that is supposed to unlock money for Ukraine. You're getting to the end of the road on Ukraine. So what is the view here on what happened over the weekend with the breakdown in those talks? So look, we've been pretty consistent and... Uh... By the way, for those of you that don't know what that question refers to, the, the question is in reference to the, the talks that they've been having regarding uh, our own border security and how there's a mandate being put on by a lot of members in the House that basically say we need to worry about our border security before we worry about Ukraine's border security, right? Fair? So it's all, the, the discussions have all collapsed because people want to fund the Ukrainian war machine it's going to get more and more people killed, and Russia's still going to win anyway. So she's being asked what you know what uh, they think, and this is, by the way, this is this relates to our border. Are not um, going to get into the hypotheticals or specific. I'll rewind this for just a second, and this is one of her favorite answers. By the way, I'm not going to get into the hypotheticals. Be consistent, and uh, are not um, going to get into the hypotheticals or specifics of the conversations happening in Congress going to let uh, congressional members, senators have those uh, those conversations. Uh, I can say that as we've done with many, um, many when legislation is discussed, as we've done with many other uh, components of or other times that legislation comes to comes to like a, a debate, we offer technical assistance and certainly uh, we offer any advice that may be needed from us. But we're, I'm just not going to get into uh, hypotheticals from here. Uh, you saw the letter from as it relates to our national security. You saw the letter from our OB, OMB director, Shalanda Young. You heard from uh, Jake Sullivan just moments ago about uh, how important it is uh, to get the supplemental done it, it is important to our national security and so we're going to be really clear about that and and uh continue to speak um pretty steadfast and, and let congress know the time is now to get this done i'm going to pawn this off to congress and i'm also going to pawn it off to a few other people other than ourselves because we as the executive have the responsibility of enforcing the existing laws and if we actually enforce the existing laws, we wouldn't have any problems, but we're not going to even talk about that. You understand? Guys, let me back up and just simply say, if, if you have not caught up on it already, which you, I guarantee you, everybody in this audience has caught this already. You all have seen it because you're not dummies, right? And even if you didn't see it, it didn't mean you're a dummy. But it does mean that clearly there's, there's an element here that's missing, and it just be because some people might not be familiar with the politics of all of this. But I want to make myself very clear. There is malicious intent involved in all of this. Okay? Here's the part that a lot of people don't pick up on. And that is if the executive branch simply enforced the law, you wouldn't have this illegal alien problem. You'd have a big massive wall. We wouldn't be losing money hand and foot. It would be over. One follow on Israel Hamas. The General Secretary of the International Federation of Journalists told the AP in an interview today that journalists or media workers are killed. One is killed every, every day on average in the war, making it a conflict beyond compared to any other. At least 60 journalists have been killed since October 7, most of them Palestinians. So my question is, is as... By the way, when they talk about Palestinian journalists being killed and the propagandizing that she's doing by discussing these Palestinian journalists, you just need to understand who these people are, Hamas fighters. They're strapping some kind of, I'm press, I'm... Uh, they, Okay, let me let me let me uh, help you better frame this or understand this. Okay, when I went to an undisclosed location to view the classified videos that depict the murder of out of the thirteen hundred that were murdered, that 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 actually showed us one hundred and ninety murders, which that'll do a number on your brain. Much of that footage was taken by so-called journalists. 
These are not journalists. These are terrorists. Hamas terrorists that take great joy in filming the death and destruction of human lives that are Jewish. So she's framing this as, what are we going to do to protect the journalists? What are we going to do to solve the journalist problem? But look at her. Jean-Pierre's answer is more ugly than the framing of the question. Because the framing of the question is a statement that doesn't give anybody a way out to say, hold on, hold on, they're not journalists, they're terrorists. Watch this. The U.S. urges Israel to uh, minimize the deaths of Palestinian civilians. Is there a similar emphasis that's placed on sparing journalists from being oh. caught in the crossfire? I, mean, I just want to be clear. I haven't seen this interview, so I want to be really clear about that. But obviously, uh, the making sure that journalists who are really important on the ground and reporting on what's happening uh, on the ground and making sure that they're protected and able to do that is, is critical. It's important. Uh, and that is uh, that we've been a pretty consistent here about uh, protecting and making sure that journalists um, are able to uh, do what they're uh, are able to gather the facts, report the facts, and do that uh, in a way that uh, you know, they're, they're not uh, threatened or they're not uh, put in danger. Obviously, they are in a dangerous situation, uh, but obviously that is a concern for us. Uh, we're certainly monitoring that, uh, having those conversations, but I did not see this interview, so I want to be really, really clear about that. But uh, we want to make sure that journalists are protected. What they're doing on the ground is, is critical. It's important. Uh, in we want to make sure journalists are protected. And what they're doing on the ground is critical, even if what they're doing is destroying and attacking Jewish lives. These are terrorist people. Can't understand that. Yes, there may be a few legitimate journalists who have died. Understand? Absolutely. Come on. Let's get real. Come on. Let's get real. Hearing uh, and hearing directly from them on what they're saying. Thank you. Uh, Kareem, does the White House believe that additional election monitors are necessary in swing states across the country? So, when we Pay attention to this question about additional election monitors. You have members of the media right now that are saying that they're very concerned about making sure the integrity of the elections are maintained. And by the way, I, I just have to be very careful how I frame this because for obvious reasons. Uh, Chava 2K, you say this, you say, this is evil in action. A Palestinian journalist just got an award for a picture of terrorists masking off or making off with the body of a young lady they had just brutally murdered after raping, by the way. You're right. hundred percent. It's just crazy. But now you're at, now these reporters are asking questions about the integrity of the election. Elections have consequences, right? Understand that, right, guys? When we talk about elections, we know that you elect the wrong person in office, you can destroy a country very quickly. We're watching that happen right now. You elect somebody like President Joe Biden in office, that president will destroy the country, and he has. So people want to make sure, what are we doing to maintain election integrity? Look at the nonsense. That comes back with this. Because, guys, there's a problem. It, it, look, 27 states do not require an ID in order to cast your vote. I'm not going to say anything other than you have to give an ID if you buy over-the-counter medication. If, if you buy in some cities... If you want to buy basic, if you want to buy dry ice, some people won't sell it to you unless you're 18 or older. And you got to, they card you. <coughs> if you got to show ID to rent a car, to buy an airplane ticket, to get in and out of an airport, if you've got to show ID in some cases to buy gas at the gas station when you give them your credit card. If you got to show ID to do a whole bunch of things. But you don't have to do it here to vote. We got a problem, don't we? It's a big problem. Think about that for a second.
Oh, that's funny. Do you see what Chava 2K said? He said he had to edit out that word. Or he couldn't post to the chat. That's crazy. You want to talk about how absolutely insane that is. So he had to edit out the word that starts with an R and ends with an E in order to be able to put that. That's so crazy. I mean, I can understand why YouTube want, wants to do that, but come on, give me a break. There's yeah, yes. Anyway, I'm, I'm, I, there's so much about all of this that I just, that I just have to say, it's just, it's just such a crazy, crazy world that we live in folks. It, it It's just absolutely insane. It's nuts. It's just nuts. This, the, none of this makes any sense under any level for any reason. It, it, it's just, it's just crazy. I'm sorry, but it doesn't make sense. It just doesn't. Okay. Uh, let's continue on with this. Careful because we're talking about upcoming elections, obviously. Uh, I'm assuming you're referring to 2024 and, and what we're going to be potentially seeing. Be careful to ask this question. How dare you ask a question about the election? The election is coming up. Don't you dare ask the question. Don't talk about it. Uh, so I'm going to have to refer you to the to the campaign, obviously, for us. And we've been uh, we've taken actions on the federal level on making sure voting uh, uh, is uh, accessible and have taken the president signed an executive action very early on on what we can do on the federal level to make sure that voting is a lot easier for folks and they have access and they're educated on what's available to them. Voting is a lot easier and they have access. Do you understand that the that the that the that the administration, current administration in office, the regime in office has actually made the statement that if you're black, you're stupid. Because you shouldn't have to present an ID because that actually requires that you do something. And some people have a very, very hard time getting an ID. Are you kidding me? That's the insanity. That's the insanity of this. But I want to be really careful, uh, certainly, on talking about anything that's related to 2024. I know, and I just want to challenge you a little bit on that, yeah, because sure. it's, it's not, I'm not asking for a reaction, at least not directly, uh, to the person who brought this up. Yeah. I'm asking broadly about whether or not the infrastructure is sufficient and whether the White House believes it needs additional backup. I will say this, we believe that um, voting should be made easier, easier for Americans. Uh, we've been very clear about that. Uh, it should not be. Uh, by easy, that means you don't require ID. That's, that's by easy, that's what that means. Or by easy, it means you can mail in your ballot or we can do a bunch of ballot harvesting. That, that's what that means. That's what they're talking about here. And, um, and, and I can just say, it's been a very beneficial uh, process for them. Uh, there should not be put in a place or in a situation where they, their right to vote is, is uh, there's an obstacle in any way. Um, and so, look, every state deals with that differently. Every state has their own um, kind of process. Uh, so certainly not going to pre preempt that. And By the way, is it funny how she goes on, she hides behind the fact that every state has their process and we should just let every state do whatever they want to do. Yet it is her regime, right? It is her president and his regime that has gone out of their way to file lawsuits or injunctions against states that are requiring IDs. Huh? It's under the purview of the state. Yet you're going to put your hands in there and get involved in it. We see, you, you guys understand the, the, the insanity of, of all of this? Talk about a, a what states are doing or what that may look like for any of these battleground states uh, that certainly are going to be uh, focused on by all of you uh, next year. I just want to be super, super careful on how I uh, how I speak to anything that's related to 2024. So I'm just being incredibly mindful here. Um, just on the uh, funding for Ukraine and Israel, given that the impasse right now seems to be over border issues, can you speak a little bit about uh, what the White House? is and isn't willing to support on that issue specifically. I'm just not going to negotiate from here, not going to get into any uh, policy uh, specifics or provisions or whatever is being discussed as it relates to that uh, in the Senate. Uh, I'm just going to let them have those conversations. I'm just not going to lay out uh, what we will accept or not accept. I'm just going to let them do, deal, with, uh, deal with the process on the other side of, of Pennsylvania. <laughs> 
<laughs> just, I, folks, look, I, I, I just have to say this, okay? I mean, I'm going to say it again and again and again. It's, it's ridiculous. This kind of nonsense is ridiculous. And we continue to see it happening again and again and again and again. And it is the ugliness that is the world that we live in. And it's getting darker and more foolish and filled with all kinds of stupidity. And folks, I'm telling you, there is a grand conspiracy that is tied to all of this. So what we're going to do is this. It's going to be fun. We're going to take a little bit of a different turn. Okay? I'm going to pull Dale over here. We're going to put the camera on both of us. And we're just going to take some questions from you guys. We're not going to go on Locals today because uh, we've got a crazy schedule. We do ask that you pray because this is Easter week and we've got some big videos coming your way, all kinds of great stuff happening. Um, guys, I'm, I'm just telling you this right now. We have a lot to thank the Lord for. I mean, we, we listen, we're talking about Easter weekend and um, we celebrating Easter is such an important part. You got to come a little closer. Celebrating Easter is such an important part of what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. It's, it's so critical. Um, God's been so faithful to us, right? I mean, listen, the resurrection of Christ is, is where the centers around the blood of Jesus that was shed, the hope that we have, and it's getting dark. You know, we live in a world right now, I mean, there, we, we live in a world right now where there are people that aren't even um, pastors that don't even want to use the word resurrection anymore because they don't want to offend anybody. It's, it's just that crazy. So um, we have a, bro, I have not had you online in, on one of my shows in a long time. Yeah. Oh, we, we normally get, I don't do even stuff have together. headphones. Yeah, dude, I don't know what's up. Like, I don't know why your headphones aren't on, bro. You got to get through all that tangle nonsense. Bro, you, you have been such a, you haven't been around at least online with me, like on video, but you've been such a huge, massive, important part of our ministry here. Like, I think I should say that publicly. Like, you're you're a huge blessing. There's okay. been a lot going on, bro. We've been talking about a lot of this stuff. It has like we, been crazy. Oh, my goodness. A lot of the stuff that we do, like when we go back and we, uh, we do these stories and we pull all these things, you have a team of guys that work with you now that bring a lot of this stuff my way. I mean, I do a lot of reading on my own. I mean, I have to. But um, we got some doozies planned over the next few days, don't we? We do. We're, we're talking about the red heifers tomorrow. Yep. I'm releasing that tomorrow. A, a red heifer video. We're going to do that. 45 minutes talking about heifers. Red heifers. I uh, I don't think there's a single day that comes up where somebody doesn't mention a red heifer in the I know. chat. I know. I know. So that's a big one. Oh, look at this. Sarah Jade says, because of Dale, I found that my current church. Hopefully it's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. I, I, I hope that's oh, the case. That's funny. Uh oh, the two dollars are beginning to come. Uh, here <laughs> <laughs> What's that? By the hey, uh, by the way, Barton, just for you. Okay, just for you. There it is. Oh my every oh single my. time here it comes, when the two dollars right? start. It's gonna coming, start <laughs> this craziness. The two dollar super chats. <laughs> oh my word. Every single time we're gonna get the little beep. Every every single time. Hey, so um, we got some really good questions here. Um, Brad actually has a really good one. He says, uh, with the Australian bank going to CBDC, mm -hmm. uh, do you see this uh, catalyzing its introduction in the United States? Yes, but I want to make something really clear, Brad. They've already been at CBDCs for a long time. Yeah. United States has been at CBDCs for a long time. What they're doing is they're going from CBDCs, which is the back-end bank side, to actually going to a cashless side where people are now going to not have to pay or anything. It's, it's pretty amazing. Full digital, yep. no no branches. Look at this, bro. Look at what Dean just did. Dean just hooked you up right now. Look at that. There it is. Oh, my that word. Was, that was for Dean. Big Mike! We had to do that for him. Thank you, bro. I... I think that's just that's going to start happening now. Once once they iron it out a little bit in Australia, it's going to happen. Like you know, they're going to save because they're going to be able to eliminate 
basically like 75 percent of the people that work for them yeah it's dude it, there's bro there's there's so much to this man and there's a lot happening i would agree with like jp morgan's got some plans ahead of them there's there's a lot that's happening right now yeah 100 percent. i mean uh it, it's a it's 100 percent right and by the way justin justin klein it's good to see you at church man uh it's 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 awesome to see you with your babies or with your baby uh i I well, we're all listen. They're all babies to us. I mean, your baby's yeah. not a baby, but you know what I mean. Um, you say, do you guys think the bridge incident could be God cursing the USA because of what the USA did at the UN? Probably not. I think that what happened with the bridge was probably nefarious. That's what I think. I mean, I could be wrong, but I mean, I think I think it was nefarious. Uh, Brad, it does by make the way, you wonder, you. like when you drive over a bridge. I mean, oh, that, yeah, thing, dude. that thing I mean, crumbled like a make, house dude, of cards. Me, it makes me not want to drive over a bridge. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm not, dude, I'm not joking. I'm, I'm, I'm not kidding you. I'm not. Brad, thank you. Does that mean that since you did that for the Super Chat, does that mean I have to do this 10 times? No? Uh, please, no. Watch your mouth, Dale. <laughs> Oh my bro, word. what is it? What is it? See this? I don't like this, bro. How is it that you come on with me and and the live numbers drop? Well, look, I know you've rejected this theory before, but two dollars for Dale. God it's, bless. It's clearly because everybody everybody likes me more. <laughs> wait, wait. So they like you more, so the numbers drop. How does that work? I, uh, I don't know. Did they go down? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's end of the show. Cold feet. I think. Is that what it is? Yeah. You lost like a hundred simultaneous watchers. Uh, yeah, but it's seven 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 right now. Well, that's true. Now it's seven seven nine. See, I would think that when Dale joined me, there'd be like two hundred more people that would show up, because then it's not nearly as ah, not so much, huh? Yeah. You know, speaking of that bridge collapse, I saw somebody post the other day. They said something about that bridge collapse seems fishy to me. <laughs> <laughs> bro, the two dollars are coming in, bro. Oh, Look at here it. We go. Vinny. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it, I, listen, it is that that bridge collapse thing is, I'm telling you, it, that I don't think, I think there's something seriously conspiratorial happening. You know, it is interesting. Like, this, this, these are things that my wife said to me uh, because we were talking about it the other day. She was like, how long did they investigate it until they knew for sure it wasn't a terrorist attack? Mm -hmm. Like four hours, right? Um, they were calling it an accident, bro, like within minutes of the time that they got that thing on footage. Yeah, so so there's that. And then, um, you know, the fact, since when, and I think it's probably just a re-election thing, but since when does the president just come out like, hey, we're paying for it? Oh, I know, bro. I know. It's it's it is so ridiculous. It's so ridiculous. Dawn's giving you some love. Thank you, Dawn. We love you. She says yes, Pastor Dale. But at the same time, I I like I watched the video. There's definitely something up with that ship. The way it was, bro. It churning, has to be smoke. Like if you put that thing, if you put that thing in double and triple speed, you can see it just literally taking a turn, a very precise turn, right towards that post. Yeah. I, I don't, I mean, I, I don't know enough about it. I just know that's a huge body of water. There's got to be some strong currents there. Anything can happen, but um, I have no idea. I It's just, the whole thing is crazy. I'm just surprised with a bridge that big because that thing was massive. And that post didn't co collapse. That post was just hit really hard, right? I don't know. No, I, that's what I think happened. It, it well, stopped that the, whole the ship. section, all of it's laying down on the ship, right? Yeah, but the post didn't collapse. It just got hit super hard. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know how how all of that played out because you can't really see from the video I saw. You can't really see, but I wonder if the protective part of that uh, upright wasn't enough to actually keep the the ship from striking it. You know what I mean? So there's the part in the water. I think the tip of the ship was still able to hit that upright. Before I'm telling it, you, man, I'm telling you what it.
what can, okay can I ask this question yeah but there is uh, what if that ship was specifically loaded the way it was loaded to be able to do exactly that could be I just here's here's so here's the side of me that says uh not an in, an intentional thing it's like well why would they just go after this bridge yeah yeah it's gonna it's gonna cause some trouble in the area right it's gonna be a big expense major major trade it affects major trade yeah trade and everything tra- it's, it's a huge deal i just think there's probably a more effective target un- unless there's just uh you know it's one of many things you know and did we find out what kind of a cargo ship it was like if it was a russian cargo ship or if it was a uh, yeah it wasn't it was uh i'm sure somebody in the chat will tell us in a second i i just don't remember off the top of my head it was like it was a different Oh, look at that. They say the captain of the ship is Ukrainian. That's right. Which Ukrainian is very common captain. by the way. Yeah. Very very common. Holy smokes. Well, I guess one of the people Oh, from Singapore. Singapore. Yeah. Singapore, that's, that's right. interesting. You no, know, Singapore's going to have to but pay up. You know, with a lot of these ships, there's that's the flag they were flying right at that time. There there's some uh Sometimes. They were flying a Ukrainian flag on no, the ship? No, 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 the Singapore. So, I don't know. I'm not, like, I, who who even knows? It's crazy. That, I, I, I'm looking forward to the day when, when we're in heaven. And finally we can, like, have the true answers to all of this mess. Because how many of these things have happened that it's like there's no way? Oh, all right, look, I, I think when we're in heaven, we're not going to give a rip about any of it. Right. Because all the people that did those things won't be there with us. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I should rejoice over that, but it is kind of cathartic to understand the fact that we're not going to be exposed to any of that nonsense one day. I uh Vin Dog asked about the tugboat. I don't know if they're required to have a tugboat uh what going it, through those he just said what, what happened to the tugboat. Well, so this is interesting. And yeah. again, I know nothing about this. Michael right. would know. If Michael Digman's on, he would know. But um, I, I'm almost certain that they have to tug one of those boats when they go under the bridges, when the bridges don't open up. I'm almost certain of that. I would. Oh, yeah. and Justin says that it's know. a big uh, Navy weapons harbor, which I did not know that. See, I, I would like Michael to to uh, to jump in. Mike, can you jump in and let us know um, if this is? It was great, by the way, hanging out with you on Zoom the other day. Um, I'd be I'd be really curious. Would something that big be? Would you require to have a tugboat? I know some of the people say, "Yeah, we did in the Navy," because when it's that big, bro. Yeah, you, I don't you know. can't afford to have propelled power. Like he it doesn't. should be dragged. Oh, he said he doesn't know. I don't know that, Pastor James. I've never been in the Baltimore Harbor. Okay, well, Michael, can You're I dig? Out, what, can I? But can I dig? <laughs> let me dig a little deeper into your knowledge, bro. Um, okay, I get that, right? You've never been to the Baltimore Harbor, but isn't it a common practice to require a tug when you're doing something that involved or in, uh, intricate? How about that? Um, maybe you can give me some input there. Yeah, so he says tugs are used a lot to get uh, onto and off the pier, which that would make sense, right? Yeah, because if you're going onto the pier, you don't want to be, you don't want to, you don't want to approach the pier under power. That's interesting. Yeah, and then D. Yeah. D W R U T S G N T. Yep. He was in Norfolk. He's always got good info. It's interesting, man. I don't know. I it's, it's it, it doesn't look like from what I'm reading that it's common like in that area you just uh, because of the width of the river and everything you just uh navigate on your own underneath there. Yeah. It's interesting. Michael says he's seen tugs used for station keeping in the ocean before. I mean, yeah, because things could get kind of hairy, you know? So, I mean, I get it. 
But isn't it funny how everybody's becoming an expert now on maritime events? Well, of course. During this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, All right. Well, let's take uh, two more questions. Do you see any? Everybody's chiming in on tugboats right now. I know, bro. A lot of people are talking about it right now. I mean, it's not a here. small. It's not a small issue. It's a big issue. Vin dogs now like bypassing the system and texting me directly because <laughs> <laughs> he wants it to be read. Uh, yeah, that's something. You know, Vin probably. The, the, I, probably the government is planning something big, man. I mean, they've always been planning stuff that's nonsense. Ay, ay, ay. Chessie Gloina says, question, thoughts on Trump selling Bibles? So somebody mentioned this earlier in Trump the chat. Trump is selling Bibles? He's not, actually. He's endorsing a Bible. It's like the you probably don't uh, want to go to Trump or any other pol politician to endorse a Bible. It just <laughs> it's a bless the USA Bible or something. It's got it's a King James version of the Bible that has like the Constitution, um, the the Pledge of Allegiance, a bunch of uh, Declaration of Independence, may, maybe a few other things. I don't remember. Also included in the beginning of it. Uh, Guys, don't pay any mind to any of those Bibles. Just wait until I start selling them. Okay, that's right. And then you can buy mine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> wait, I want to get out of the way so I'm not struck with lightning. <laughs> <coughs> it's a terrible joke. Uh oh, Nicole, love you, Pastor Dale. See that? Watch your mouth. Okay, here's a. <laughs> <laughs> that that joke was a flop. <laughs> Why am I getting beat up now over it? No, no, it uh, just anyways. Uh Remnant Warrior Eclipse question mark. Oh yeah, is the is the eclipse going to be, you know, a big prophetic event? Probably not. Now, I haven't had a chance to look at it, but uh uh Mariana says they're restarting the uh CERN the same day as the eclipse. Confirm that. I'm like, if they do. If listen, they, like, if they're of starting they CERN, do. if they're starting CERN the same day as the eclipse, I'm going to make a video about it. I I, I really want to find out. Yeah, there's uh, a part of me that hopes that Mariana is right. I, yeah, me too. I'm like, so that, that if that happens, that's like. I mean, I, we have no reason to believe she's wrong. No, but you know, it's hard to say. There's so much. Uh, Mariana crazy said she's going to send you the link. That's interesting. Do to do to do, do. I know lots of people are looking it up right now. Probably. Yeah. The only the only thing is, if you guys try to put a link in the chat, it's not going to let you. So. By the way, you guys who are talking about the red heifer, getting ready to sacrifice the red heifer, I'm doing that story tomorrow. My my, oh, It's about a, uh, I think, 48-minute 48 vi 48 video. It'll be really good. I think you'll appreciate it. Yeah, people are saying CERN, April 8th is the first suggestion when you type CERN in Google. I mean, we have no reason not to believe that, but it's always good to confirm it before we do a story on it. Sure. It's interesting. All right. Uh, let's take one more question and then we'll, we'll, uh, we'll wrap it up because we've been on for a long time, a very long time. And it looks like Brad's got all the answers here. I can tell you what will happen on the day of eclipse. <laughs> it will get dark. <laughs> <laughs> Sisu 777, thank you so much. Mariana says, check your email. Okay. Uh, first question that comes to me. We're, we're looking for a question. What I may do is actually look for... Uh, did we, were there other questions that we missed? Dill, you're getting distracted. Well, you, want, you asked me to do this. 
Oh, they're, they're expecting it on April 8th, sure enough. I just think they can't they can't resist the opportunity, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> Question, do you love us? <laughs> of course I love you guys. What are you talking about? I love uh, you guys a ton. Is that the, is that really going to be our last question? Uh, no, it was just the last one that I saw. Austin, how do we email you? A couple of ways you can do that. CCSH at CalvaryChapelSignalHill.com or you can go to JamesCadiz.com and send me a message that way. Justin, great. We'll see you uh, Friday. Yeah, that's right. Our Friday service is 6.30, not 7. That's right. All right. Well, there it is. I think we're going to wrap it up. Do you want to close in prayer for us? Let's do it. Right. Father, thank you for this day. We pray that you would um, continue to give us wisdom and discernment in everything that we do. Lord, thank you for your grace and your love in our lives. Direct us today, Lord, and uh, fill us with your spirit and your strength, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, you guys. We love you. God bless you. Remember. Fight the good fight. Keep fighting the good fight. Love you guys.